How you doing? That's good. Now let's get right to the point because there's a lot to unpack. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, I paraphrase for brevity. Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me, did we not prophesy in your name or cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second here. Seems pretty harsh. I mean, where's the happy-go-lucky, cheek-turning, white conservative lamb holding everybody's okay genie in a bottle Jesus we slap on our greeting cards on Christmas and Easter? What in the world is going on here? Why does he say depart from me when they did all these amazing things in his name? And why won't everyone who says, Lord, Lord, enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, the answer is found in that question, my friends, wrapped up in a riddle, spun as a metaphor, and delivered here today forthwith at breakneck speed. Lots of people think that salvation depends on their good deeds outweighing their bad deeds. Like for some reason, God will overlook the 1,001 bad things you did if for some reason and somehow you did 1,002 good things. A lot of other people know they haven't done enough good things, so they think if they simply say a prayer, walk down an aisle when emotional music is playing, and say four hallelujahs after they do a bad thing, then, well, hey, God will like them a little more for their religious behavior, forget about all their sins, and open the pearly gates. Well, both of these views, which are really the same view, is exactly what's being addressed in our Matt 7 passages. Look at it. These people that called to Jesus said, did we not prophesy? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not do mighty works? We, 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 all the way home. You see that? The pronoun is wrong, baby. And Jesus is letting them know that. He's saying there ain't no we when it comes to salvation from the wrath of God. There's only I. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the resurrection of life. I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. According to Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Salvation from what? Well, from the wrath of God, from spending eternity in a place called hell, which I get nobody likes to talk about these days, but hey, we got to say it like it is, friendo. And belief is not just a mental affirmation of the facts. No, 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 no. It's placing your complete trust in the person and finished work of Jesus. That means salvation has nothing to do with our righteousness, because according to Romans 3.10, none is righteous, no, not one. And in case that isn't clear enough, Isaiah 64, 6 says, all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works. Well, okay, let's hammer this home. In Luke 18, two men went into the temple to pray, and one said, I'm glad I'm not like those sinners who do worse things than me. I mean, I do all kinds of good things that people see, like smiling and saying pious things and praying. I go to church, I even give money and tithe, I even fast. All in all, I'm a pretty good guy, right? The other guy wouldn't even lift up his eyes. He beat on his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said, it's that guy, the chest beater, who went away justified. Then a rich dude comes up to Jesus and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Notice the pronoun. After some chit-chat, the rich man walked away sad because he realized he couldn't earn, buy, or achieve eternal life his way. People then ask Jesus, well, who can be saved then? To which Jesus replies, well, there's nothing anybody can do to inherit eternal life. It's impossible. Salvation is only possible if God does something. And what God did is send his only begotten son into the world so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So let me ask you, are you the first dude in the temple, the rich man who walks away sad, the religious dude who present all the great things that they've done? Or do you agree with God that you are a sinner in need of a savior who cries out for mercy and puts your trust in the saving work of Jesus? Time to do some serious soteriological soul searching, seeking scripture sufficient solution, I'd say. Because this idea that we can do good things to gain God's grace or inherit eternal life by our own merit, or that our salvation is earned by walking down an aisle or any other way, has been debunked. Adios.